Hello everyone, I'm Rich Stocks. Today I'm continuing our series on true financial freedom. Stay there, I'll be right back after these announcements. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. We are proclaiming God and His Word as the one source of spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. Now, here's Rich. Good things come from the Father of light. Shadow of turning or changing its mind. Hello, friend. I have a question for you. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life? Go to our website, richstocks.org. We have a video for you called, What Must I Do to Be Saved? Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of free videos. If you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new teaching. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites you'll find very helpful for nutrition and wellness, mineraldoctor.com. For weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say, thank God for all my partners. Together, we are sending God's Word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week, we hear from people in Africa, and they're hungry for the Word of God. We have a special new project, and I want to give you the opportunity to be part of this. The studio we've been using to film our broadcast is no longer available, so we've released our faith for $50,000 to build our own studio, and it's all coming in through people just like you. To have a look or to sow a seed, go to richstocks.org and watch our video called Partner Project 2023. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. To show my appreciation, I want to send you my book, The Secret of an Unshakable Life. And I look forward to hearing the great things that God's doing in your life. Hello, everyone. We're in a series called True Financial Freedom. I've kind of lost track of the number. I think we're up to about lesson seven. And a couple of lessons ago, we looked at the first step to financial freedom, which is called the law of faithfulness. We read in Luke chapter 16, Jesus talked about being faithful in three areas, that which is least, the unrighteous mammon, and that which belongs to another man. In that story, all three were, were not actually three different areas. It was one area, and that was the area of money. It was called the parable of the unjust steward, a man who had not been faithful, managing his master's goods, material possessions. So we looked at those. He broke it down into three parts, that which is least. Now, that could be quantity. You could many applications. The interpretation there is money, but there could be many different applications. So that which is least, if you're not faithful, Jesus said, with a little bit. You will not be faithful if you had much. Now, again, people try to argue with that, and they think, if I had as much money as you, man, I'd be faithful. I'd be a tither. I'd be a giver. No, <clears throat> no, you're, you're actually, you're calling Jesus a liar when he says that. He knows. And I can testify, and I said this last time, and I you should go back and watch these, by the way, because we build on each one. If you just pop in on a lesson, I'm going to say some things that you, you're going to be more tempted to be, yeah, I don't know about all that. But if you go back and watch it, if you're really open to truth, if you're a seeker of truth, and remember, this is how we started this whole thing. One of my favorite verses in the entire Bible is found in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, where Jesus said he gave us the key to freedom, any kind of freedom. He said that it's continuing in his word. If you continue in my word, then... You're my disciple, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, we looked at just knowing it's not enough. you got to mix action with it. And so God, is, he, as soon as a person gets born again, I'm convinced the first thing we ought to teach them, there's going to be people disagree. Well, Brother Rich, first thing we ought to teach them is how to pray. No, I don't agree. First thing we ought to teach them, they need to come to church. Uh, they need to come, but... The first thing God's looking at is not your faithfulness to pray, not your faithfulness to attend church. All those, those things are important. Don't twist what I'm saying. But the first thing, according to Jesus, that God looks at is that which is least, which he says is money. 
Think about it, unrighteous men. He says, if you're not faithful with that, we saw in Luke 16, 11, who will commit to your trust true riches? You want true riches? What are true riches? We may not even know what all they are. True riches, that's all encompassing. That's everything God has. True riches. And yet Jesus said in Luke 16, 11, the key to true riches is you being faithful with what he called the unrighteous mammon with your money. Isn't it an amazing statement? Now, this isn't something that some preacher made up somewhere. This is the word of God. That God's looking at, the first thing he's looking at, what are you going to do with, what's that person going to do with their money? This is how I'm going to determine what I can do in their life. What are they going to do with their money? Because if they're not faithful with their money, I can't do much else in their life. Now, this is, this is what he taught us in Luke chapter 16. Well, that brought us up to this verse, Leviticus 27, verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. And it's holy to the Lord. And that word tithe means tenth. We called the last lesson the Lord's tithe. And the reason I specifically call it the Lord's tithe, there was more than one tithe in the Old Testament. There was the Lord's tithe, that was the first tithe. There was the second tithe, which was 10%. There was the third tithe, which was once every three years. So that comes out to be three and a third percent per year. Then there was a government tax as 10%. So there was 33 or 30, yeah, 33 and a third percent, a third of their income had to go for other things. Well, some of you are probably in a tax bracket where they're taking more than that just in taxes, but we won't get off on that here today. So we've been talking about the Lord's tithe and we saw something very exciting that the simple act of bringing God the first tenth qualifies you for being faithful in all three of those areas that Jesus mentioned. That which is least, that means you're tithing even if you have a little bit or if you have a lot and it doesn't get easier when you make more money, it gets harder. <laughs> so if you're thinking, man, it's going to get easier, it's not. Think about it. If I have $100, my tithe is just $10. But what if I have a million? Woohoo! A hundred thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. You start thinking about all the things you can do with that money and you think it'd be easier. It's not. It's not. Let me just tell you. All right. The devil will try to twist your mind around this thing and mess you up. But the simple act of tithing meets all three of those criteria that Jesus mentioned. Being faithful in that which is least or with a little bit. Being faithful in unrighteous mammon because your tithe is material in nature. And being faithful in that which is another man's. That's what that whole story was about. The tithe is another man's, but he's not just a man. It's God's. So think about it. Think about it. The simple act of tithing is the first step to financial freedom because that checks off all three of those boxes that Jesus talked about. That which is least, unrighteous mammon, and that which belongs to someone else. I'm bringing God what belongs to him. If you're not faithful in that which belongs to him, he says you wouldn't be faithful no matter what you had. All right, so let's keep moving along here. Um, and then we talked about spiritual blessing being this. We looked at the verse, Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, says God, remember the Lord your God, who's given us the power to get well. The power to get well is true riches. The wealth could come and go, but the power to get wealth. Now, that is true riches that God talked about. Here's another one. Um, Proverbs 10, verse 22, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. Well, the riches are the true riches. That blessing of the Lord that got you those true riches, that's the true riches. Are the blessing of the Lord that got you those material riches, that is is the true. Those are the true riches. The blessing. That's where the power to get wealth comes from. Okay, so the first step, the true financial freedom is simply bringing the Lord his tithe. Now, let's talk about this for a moment. Why some Christians don't tithe. Now, we'll get into this more and deeper in lessons down the road. Let's look at it today. Let's scratch the surface. 
why do some Christians not tithe? I don't know what percentage do. I mean, my mouth wants to say why most Christians don't tithe, but I don't know that that's true. Maybe. I, there, there are probably statistics out there. I'm just here to help you. At this point, I really don't care, you know, what the percentage is. I don't care to know. Not that I don't care. I hope, would like to see every believer. Man, if I ever pastored a church, I've pastored before. If I ever did again, and I'm not planning to, but I wasn't planning to before, who knows? My goal would be for every member of that church to be a tither. Ah, uh, Rich, it's not all about the money. Yeah, God said that's where he starts judging faithfulness. So in that sense, it is. He's not looking at anything else till he sees what you do with that. If I ever pastored a church, my goal, pastors, if you're watching me, I had a pastor one time, I came to his church and I taught some of these things. He actually said this to me. He said, Brother Rich, I appreciate you teaching that. That's just not a message a pastor can teach. If he hadn't been my elder, well, he was, I'm older now and a little bit bolder. Maybe hey, that rhymed. My son and I used to every night, we got playing the rhyme game. Don't get me off on that. Every, he got to where he could beat me and I didn't want to play anymore. We'd take a word and we'd just keep on, you know, um, see who, until we could run out of words that would rhyme with that word. So I just said, I'm older, I'm a little bolder. But anyway, the pastor said, yeah, Brother Ridge, that's just not something that a pastor can teach. And I wanted to just say, Why? Uh, there's something in the Bible and it's truth. And Jesus says, this is how people are set free. By continuing in my words, you know the truth. The truth will make you free. And I'm afraid to teach it. I'm afraid to teach it to my people. I just say this, if that's you, shame on you. I don't even like using that terminology. But if you're a pastor and you're a minister and you're squeamish about money and you don't want to talk too much, much about money and you just want to set a little bucket at the back door, shame on you. Because while you're trying to look humble and trying to look like, oh, it's not all about the money, you are robbing God's people and God doesn't like it at all. <laughs> Whew, not everybody probably like that, but I'm not taking it back. I am so serious. I, I sense right now there are pastors watching me. You just need to repent and ask God to forgive you. I had a pastor one time say, well, let's hurry up and get the offering out of the way so we can get on with the service. Are you serious? You got to be kidding me. I tell you what, I pray that nobody ever says that again. If I'm ever in a service, you know, and I'm going to be the one up there speaking and someone says, let's get the offering out of the way. That my message is getting ready to change in that service and that entire teaching, no matter what my topic, is getting ready to be about what that person just said. That's shameful. That is disgusting that God is looking at this at people's faithfulness with their money and some says, let's just get the offering out of the way, or there's a bucket by the back door. No, no shame on you. That's all I've got to say. I gotta keep moving. I could stay on that all day. But if you're watching, you're a pastor. You need, and, and that's you, you need to repent. The Lord didn't tell you to do that. The Lord didn't tell you to set a bucket at the back door. The Lord didn't tell you to get the offering out of the way. Men, there, there should be services where that's all it is. They would bring their tithes and offerings and they would make confessions and declarations before the Lord as they would give thanks for the abundance of all things and they would lift up those offerings and wave them before the Lord and heave offerings, you know, up before the Lord. And people want to say, let's just get this offering out of the way and toss something in a bucket. It's shameful. Huh. I'm not trying to be condemning here, but it's absolutely, I didn't plan to say any of this today, but it needs to be said. Why do some Christians not tithe? There's one reason right there. Thank you, Lord. That's not on my list. It sort of is because pastors won't teach them. Ministers aren't teaching this. They try to water it down, get squeamish about it. No, here's the first reason that many Christians don't tithe. That's called false doctrine false doctrine, doctrines of men and doctrines of devils. Of course, the devil doesn't want you tithing. 
if that's how God, if that's the first thing God's looking at to judge whether or not you qualify for what he called true riches, of course, he's going to try to talk you out of it. If that's what he's looking at to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there's not room enough to receive. Of course, he's going to try to talk you out of it. The first reason, and it could be the main reason people don't tithe, is because of false doctrine. They believe that tithing was under the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, under the law, and that when the law was done away, tithing was done away. We're going to pick that to pieces in the lessons to come. I thought I might get to it today. I don't think I will. I'm going to pick it apart with the Word of God not with opinions, with the Word of God. We're going to see in lessons to come that tithing did not begin with the law, and it did not end with the law. In fact, I'll give you a sneak preview of good things to come. We're going to see in the next lesson or two that the tithe, listen, that the tithe began before time began. Ooh, I, got, I got goosebumps. I need to find a better word. I got goosebumps all over my skin just then when I said that. I'm going to say it again. We're going to see in coming lessons that the tithe, that the tithe began before time began. I had goosebumps again when I said that, just coming up from the inside out. The tithe began before time began. That's not today's lesson. Getting ahead of myself, but you know... Any of you preachers know you get excited about this stuff, man. You you want to preach the last page of your notes while you're still on the first page. The tithe began before time began. We're going to see it in the Word of God. Oh, that's exciting. That before God ever created the man or created the earth or any of that stuff, that he decided in eternity past, the tithe is mine. And I am excited about this. I'm excited for you. But the first reason that many Christians don't tithe is because of false doctrine. And that's the first thing they'll say. Ah, oh, that's Old Testament. Yeah, <laughs> it's very old. It's before time began old. That's how old it is. We got to keep moving. Here's another reason that, that many Christians don't tithe. We looked at this verse a few uh, lessons back when we talked about the rich young ruler and Jesus said, hey, go sell what you had. And notice he didn't command him either, by the way. It was not a commandment. It was an invitation. I'd like to talk about that right now. He invited him. It says Jesus looked at that man and loved him. He loved him. He liked this guy. And he said, hey, go sell what you have, give to the poor and come follow me. And the guy couldn't, he didn't stick around to hear about the hundredfold return that Peter and them, Peter asked, hey, we've left everything and followed you. What's in it for us? He said, there's no man that said houses or mothers or brothers or, or lands or houses for my sake and the gospels that shall not receive. Now in this time, a hundredfold, and he clarifies houses, lands, mothers, brothers, friends, and in the life to come, eternal life, the world to come. Rich young ruler did not stick around to hear, many of you will know this, page two, or what Paul Harvey decades ago called the rest of the story. He left sad. He left sad. I hope, I hope some of you don't turn this off before you get through this series because you hear something you might not agree with. It, it would be to your detriment, not mine. You know, we're here sharing the word. We don't know who's watching and who's not. But for you to turn something off just because it might have rubbed you the wrong way, I'd encourage you not to do that. I'm encouraging you, give God a chance. Open his word to you, to open your eyes of your understanding to more of his word about financial freedom because he wants you to be free. The rich young ruler wasn't free. Well, here's why. First Timothy 6 verse 17 God says, charge them that are rich in this world, they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Well, that would go for you even if you're not rich. You could be trusting in riches that you don't even have. So don't trust in riches, he says, but in the living God, notice this, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. 1 Timothy 6, verse 17. Talking about why some Christians don't tithe. One, false doctrine. Number two, they're trusting 
in their riches. I know people right now. They're not covetous. They're not greedy. It's not that they don't want to help people, but, you know, they've worked so hard for what they have. I've had someone tell me that. A friend of mine. I'm not going to use the word they used here on Christian television. They said, I worked my, you know, what off to get what I have. I don't want to come and hear about tithing and giving every meeting. I didn't realize that God ever asked us what we wanted to hear and not hear. I didn't realize that it was the gospel buffet that we are just to pick and choose what we want, give me some more of that, but no, I don't want any of this. Well, here's some teaching on humility. I definitely don't need that. I hope that's not how you are. I hope that's how none of, that none of us are like that. I want to know all the truth because the truth you don't know, that's the area you cannot be free in and you can't, you're going to be bound up in. Why do some Christians not tithe? One, false doctrine. Two, they're trusting uncertain riches. And number three, simply, unbelief. They just don't believe in the blessing of the tithe. That brings us up to this next point. It'll probably carry over into the next lesson. Lesson. Blessing. Blessing. Into the next lesson. Why do some Christians not tithe? They do not believe what God said about the blessing. If I told you, if I said, hey, listen, there's this new gadget my friends invented. It is a sure thing. It's going to shake the world. Anything that you put in this investment, you're going to get a 10,000% return. That's what the hundredfold is, by the way. I don't know if you've ever thought about that. A hundredfold return is a 10,000% return. Now, the Bible talks a lot about sowing and reaping. And in the time that much of it was written, with such an agrarian society, I'm convinced that if, if God was starting over today and Jesus was coming to earth now in uh, 2023, he would talk more about investing in the kingdom than sowing and reaping. Rather than using an example, it's a great example, seed time and harvest, I'm convinced he would talk about investing and return on investment. There's no man that's left houses or lands that won't receive a 10,000% return on his investment in the kingdom of God. That's what the hundredfold is. Man, that's exciting to me. I got those goosebumps on me again. If it wasn't messing up all the camera and stuff, I'd have to stand up right now if it didn't mess up the camera and the lighting. I'm telling you, we're talking about a 10,000% return. Well, if I had this great investment, and I mean, we knew it couldn't fail, you would be out borrowing money and you would, you would mortgage your home, take a second mortgage. You'd sell everything you had and put every dime you could scrape together in that. And yet, those same people, some of them will not bring God the first tenth, the first dime out of every dollar, the first dollar out of every tenth. Why? Well, no matter what you say, it comes down to this. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. If you believe it, you'll do it. You'll act on it. What's the evidence that I believe in the blessing of the tithe? Because I tithe. Let's look at the blessing of the tithe before we go. We're running very low on time here, but this will set us up for next time. The blessing of the tithe. Here is our God-given incentive. I, I sure like the way God, you know, he could have just said, hey, bring me 10%. You're not going to get anything back for it. Nothing special, but it's mine. Just bring it to me because it's mine. But no, look what God said in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. There may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith. We're going to look at that testing God with the tithe. It says, see if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and you shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. The blessing of the tithe. Why do some Christians not tithe? Number one, false doctrine. They believe that it's been done away. No scripture for it. Wizit, W-S-I-T. 
I had some friends recently pulled a wizard on me. One of my partners said, and a friend of mine said, said, Rich, I'm going to pull a wizard on you. I said, go ahead. And they pulled a wizard on me. It was something I had taught, so we kind of had to get into it. I had to expound and explain a little further. I don't mind that at all. You're never going to make me mad asking me, what's wizard? what scripture is that wizard? But one reason Christians don't tithe, false doctrine. A second one, trusting in uncertain riches. Listen, the dollar could fail tomorrow. God's word cannot fail. And number three, unbelief. They simply do not believe in the blessing that God said about the tithe. We're out of time. Man, time flies on this. I want to leave you with one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, 3 John verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things, above everything, that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Hello, friend. I have a question for you. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life? Go to our website, richdocs.org. We have a video for you called, What Must I Do to Be Saved? Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of free videos. If you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new teaching. There's a link to the channel on our website, richdocs.org. We have two other websites you'll find very helpful for nutrition and wellness, mineraldoctor.com. For weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week we hear from people in Africa and they're hungry for the word of God. We have a special new project and I want to give you the opportunity to be part of this. The studio we've been using to film our broadcast is no longer available. So we've released our faith for $50,000 to build our own studio. And it's all coming in through people just like you. To have a look or to sow a seed, go to richstocks.org and watch our video called Partner Project 2023. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. To show my appreciation, I want to send you my book, The Secret of an Unshakable Life. And I look forward to hearing the great things that God's doing in your life. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. If you enjoy this teaching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For additional teachings by Rich Stocks and to help us send God's Word to others, visit our website at richstocks.org. You can also send your praise reports, prayer requests, and questions through our website. The website is richstocks.org. That's richstocks.org.